Welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 5, Video 5 on Damage Stability. Let's take a look at the floodable length analysis mode now. Floodable length is the calculation at each longitudinal point along the vessel of the maximum length of vessel that can be flooded and still allow the vessel to pass stability criteria. The typical stability criteria we use are an equilibrium criteria such as margin line immersion. So that's the first input to our floodable length method. The second input is usually a range of displacements. We want to make sure that we can pass criteria at both a lightly loaded and a heavily loaded condition. We can also specify a range of permeabilities if we wish. This is just an average permeability through the vessel, but it does give some guidance on the effect of permeability on damage response. And we can define the proposed locations of bulkheads which are used to control damage. And so we can see how the length between bulkheads compares with the allowable floodable length at each point along the vessel. When we run the floodable length calculations, the result of that calculation will be the maxim maximum length of compartment at each longitudinal position so that the vessel just passes the selected criterion. It's also possible to overlay on this graph of results the proposed bulkhead spacing. So the graph we see here then has the longitudinal position on the vessel along the bottom axis and the vertical axis is the allowable floodable length at a range of different displacements. What we see is that with damage at the aft end a, a smaller floodable length is allowable because that's more likely to immerse the transom. In this midships area of the vessel, a larger floodable length is allowable because there's less likelihood of margin line immersion. And then again, up forward, a smaller floodable length is allowable because we're likely to get margin immersion forward. Let's move over to Hydromax and take a look at how this works in practice. So we have our vessel loaded as normal and we choose the floodable length analysis mode. Notice that the load case and damage case drop downs are disabled because they're not used in this analysis method. Instead, we define the inputs directly. So for trim, we define the LCG or initial trim of zero in this case, and we define the VCG of our vessel. We also define a range of displacements that we want to check. So I'm defining here an initial displacement of 300 and uh, steps of 400 and 500 tons. And of course, we have to define our criteria. The criteria that we use for this is a little different. We don't use the normal criteria tree. Instead, we directly specify the equilibrium criteria by way of margin line or deck edge immersion and the amount of freeboard that we want to have. There's a couple of basic checks also to make sure we don't get completely out of range values. So we can limit the trim angle if we wish, and we can also uh, make sure that we have a minimum GMT and GML of our vessel. Once we've done that setup, we can start running the floodable length. And what we'll see is that a series of equilibrium analyses are carried out, and then different lengths of the vessel are progressively damaged, which are the red sections that you see there. At each point, the vessel goes into equilibrium until uh, the maximum length is damaged that just allows the vessel to pass, which means that the margin line is just not quite immersed. You can see that in the centre of the vessel, the damage can be a bit longer, and then as we come forward, the allowable length of damage becomes shorter and shorter because of the effect of damage forward and aft is greater than the effect of damage at midships. That will now be repeated for the series of displacements, and then we'll see the results. Once the analysis is finished, we can switch over to the graph window and see the results of the analysis. So what we have here is our graph of floodable length versus position along the vessel. And you can see we've got three graphs for our 300 tonne, 400 tonne and 500 tonne displacement. As I mentioned, allowable floodable length is shorter at the aft end and forward end and larger in the middle of the vessel. A useful way to see how that compares with our allowable is to use our data format command to turn on a display of compartment lengths. But before we, should, we do that, we should define where our compartments are going to go. There's a bulkheads definition window in Hydromax, and then in this window we can define the proposed locations of bulkheads. So I'm proposing to have bulkheads at 3, 10, 17 and 28 metres. And if we look at our graph here, graphic here, 
and I turn off the sections we can see where those bulkheads are proposed to be located along the vessel. So if we go back to our graph window we can use the data format command to turn on the display of compartment lengths and these red triangles that we see represent the floodable length of each compartment. The base of the triangle is where the longitudinal bulk, sorry, the transverse bulkhead is located. So we have a bulkhead at 3, a bulkhead at 10, uh, a bulkhead at 17 and a bulkhead at 28. So that means in between the bulkhead at 3 and 10 meters, when we're halfway between them, the actual floodable length is going to be 7 meters. And so we can see the actual floodable length versus the allowable floodable length. So as long as the peak of our curve there of actual floodable lengths is below our allowable, then we're probably going to be okay for our criteria. In this case, you can see that we're okay for certain loading conditions, but for the heavier loading conditions, we may not pass the criterion. The other ones look okay. Our choices then are to move our bulkheads closer together or as you can see from the shape of these curves by moving both bulkheads further forward in other words perhaps moving the engine room slightly forward or something like that then we can make it more likely that we're going to pass a criterion. So this is a useful planning tool in the early stages to work out where to place our bulkheads to give us optimal floodable lengths. What we're looking at here is individual compartments being flooded but sometimes IMO rules prescribe that adjacent compartments of two or more need to be considered and so in the data format dialog we actually have the option to flood two adjacent compartments instead of one. If we do that we get a second set of triangles on top of the first because now our floodable length is the distance not between two adjacent bulkheads but between the next but one bulkhead and so our floodable length now goes up to this point between the bulkhead at 3 meters and this next bulkhead along at 17 meters which gives us a floodable length here of 14 meters and you can see if we had to pass the two compartment standard with this vessel that would be difficult because of uh, uh, the length of flooding involved. So these displays are useful to help us plan our management of damage by placement of our watertight transverse bulkheads. That completes our explanation of floodable length. Thank you for watching.